Good morning, Gene. That's right. We are joined by Cheryl McCollins, the mother of Andre McCollins, and also Ben Novotny, their attorney. Thank you both for joining us from the Beacon Hill studio. Ben, let me start with you. Why settle this case now? The jury was deliberating. Why not let the jury decide whether this was treatment or torture, as you say? Well, Mike, it's really an issue of meeting our goals. Goal number one was to expose what's happening behind closed doors and what's been going on for about 40 years. The second one was to protect Andre and make sure that his needs can be provided for, for hopefully for the rest of his life. And if we're able to meet both goals, you really take uncertainty out of the equation and replace it with certainty. And so it was the right thing to do. Cheryl, you sat in that courtroom every single day, a trial that lasted two weeks, watching that video over and over again of your son being shocked. What does this settlement mean to you? Um, it just means that we can just move on and I'm going to try to get Andre the best help because he hasn't received it after the horrible torture and abuse. So I'm going to try to um, try my best to get him the help that he needs to move on. And Cheryl, one of the questions I keep hearing when I talk with folks, they say, how is Andre to doing today? Tell us, how is he doing and how is he faring? Um, Andre, um, he's not as good as I would like him to be, and um, he needs a lot of help. Sure. Cheryl, you brought Andre to the Judge Rotenberg Center, and I know he had been in other facilities in the past, but you did initially, well not initially, but at some point you did agree to have him undergo the shock therapy. Why did you ever agree to that in the first place? Well, I thought human treatment and logic was going to be used for therapy. I thought I was dealing with humans. And like I said, I thought they would look, use logic. I didn't know they were torturing these children. I didn't know it was a school for sadists and maniacs. I thought it was a school to help children with special needs. And the way they explained the procedure to me, that this device would do that. I didn't know that all they did was shock. I didn't know that um, there was no therapy involved, no, t no uh, speaking to the children, um, finding out, you know, the reason why they're having a behavior, and um, I didn't know that they. I didn't know. I had no idea, and I. It's hard for me to believe that the board of education would have the school as an option. So that's very disturbing to me. Ben Navani, let me ask you about this video because the Rotenberg Center has for years fought to have this video a secret. They didn't want our camera recording it in the courtroom. Now, during the course of this trial, the video is out there in the public eye getting a lot of attention. It's gone viral. Everyone's talking about it. Do you think it's important that this video is out there that people see what this shock therapy looks like? Absolutely. I mean, they've been operating with pretty much in silence behind closed doors for a long, long time. It's been a long, long struggle to get this exposed, to get this video out there. And it's not just the shock treatment they're doing. They are, for punishment, they restrict food for children. They pinch, they spank, they restrain, they shock. I mean, this, they call it adversive therapy, but I know of no therapy that lands a child in a hospital in a catatonic state for five weeks. And so it's very important that everybody's allowed to see this, and hopefully the push is to, to stop this. Cheryl, moving forward, there is already talk, a renewed call to ban the shock therapy outright. I know you said you're planning to come back to Massachusetts in June for a demonstration. What is your plan going forward? Um, to see that this school is closed down and um, and ultimately and you I think would I would li yeah I would like these children to be interviewed I would like to hear from them no one has spoken to these children they've spoken to the staff they've spoken to their parents but who has went in and pulled them to the side and spoke spoken to them individually how many people have done that? I would like to hear from them. All right, Cheryl McCollins and Ben Novotny, we thank you both. And of course, there are two sides to every story coming up a little later in this hour. I'll talk, for the, talk with the attorney for the Judge Rotenberg Center and also some parents.